Hey everybody, welcome back. In this episode of Practical Robotics, I want to give you a quick introduction to RViz, the visualization tool we use in robotics. So you can see things like maps, laser scanners, where your robot is. RViz is a tool that's going to allow you to see these things so you can more easily operate and troubleshoot your robots. I'm Lloyd, author of Practical Robotics in C++, and it is my goal to bring you my years of experience to help you build real robots without spending years to learn all this information. With that said, let's get started looking at what RViz is. Okay, I'm back. This time I think I started a launch file that actually starts the, the laser scanner and a bunch of other stuff I wanted to use for this demo. So our global options right now, fixed frame, is in the world frame. And if you're not familiar with frames, you're going to need to be to really make a, get a lot of use out of RViz. Frames are essentially different frames of reference, and um, they are linked together through transforms. So both of these subjects I cover in Practical Robotics in C++, I believe in Chapters 9, which is where I first introduce the robot operating system. The first half of the um, book, the first chapters 1 through 8, are mostly about hardware, building robots, which computers to use, and, and getting those set up. And then in chapter nine, we get into robot operating system and the basics of how it's used, how to use it. Um, and then in chapter 10 is uh, our maps for robot navigation. And there we also talk more about the use of transforms and frames. Um, with that said, um, the first thing I wanna show you is how we can add an item by pressing the add button down here and then you'll see a list of uh, display types that come up um, sometimes you can just use by topic that's available um, but i usually well they both work but we're going to click the laser scan message because we want to show a laser scan and you could um, have multiple laser scan messages shown and turning them on and off the actual display is easy as clicking the little check mark so if you have two laser scanners, um, you can just turn one on or off at a time to make it easier to view. So we're going to turn that back on though, and we're going to drop it down. Notice that it says status OK, but we don't see anything. Uh, that is because we don't have a topic listed here, and it's not real intuitive that there's something here to click, um, but you need to. So we're going to click here, and now a drop-down window opens up. Usually, if you click the arrow, it'll show you all the laser scan messages that are available um, and their topic names here. Uh, again, you'll want to be familiar with um, ROS, uh, robot operating system message types and uh, topic names, that sort of thing. So laser scan is a type of message. Scan here is a topic name, and you can rename this anything you want easily at the command line or different ways. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click scan because that is the name of my laser scan message. And then if I click away, um, now we see an error pop up, right? We still don't see anything, even though I know that scan is the proper name. The reason why, well, you know what, let's ask this why. If we dropped on the error, the topic name is okay. The points are okay. This message here, what does this say? If we come down here for the error message, a transform for fixed frame world to laser does not exist. Um, and that brings us back up here to the global options. Right now, the frame of reference for our viz is the whole world. I don't usually use the whole world, um, especially in an indoor little robot. Um, usually map is my largest um, fixed frame of reference. But if I use map, I would still have to have a map to laser scan message. Basically, um, this doesn't know where the laser scanner is in reference to the whole world, right? It doesn't have uh, the transform data uh, to plot those. So for now, let's go back here real quick. Um, Ross, topic, echo. 
dash n1 scan. Here's one of the ways that you can find the frame of reference for the specific topic you were trying to show. And actually, it was back in Arvis, but if we scroll up to the header uh, data for uh, the laser scan, this is an entire laser scan message. All these numbers are ranges. Back up here, the frame ID is laser. And I guess we didn't need to do that because it was in fact shown when we looked at this error, right? Uh, Arvis knows what the frame is. It says laser frame is what we're trying to display. And um, it does, uh, there's no transform available. But if we make the fixed frame laser, now we can see it, it's a little faint. And let's go ahead and fix that. Topic's okay, our transform is okay because we're reading a message in the scan frame and using, or in the laser frame, and we're using the laser frame as our reference. Um, this is a little faint, sometimes hard to see. So let's use, oh, here we go, size. Five's pretty good. And um, I guess now's a good time to start showing you some of these options here, right? All right, we can do different things here, but if I click focus camera, that's going to center us on something, right? Because all the rest of the moving around just rotates and it doesn't, if something's out of view a little bit, it doesn't really help us. So focus camera is helpful. Um, and then move camera is, uh, brings us back to this. As long as we have focus camera um, selected, I'm clicking and moving and it's not rotating or anything. So, um, so that's step one. And now we can see all the points from our laser range scanner. Um, I've got a little RP lighter on that robot downstairs, and you're looking at my uh, living room and my dining room. My kitchen's getting a little out of view. So that's pretty handy. Um, that's the first thing I wanted to show you. Now, if, um, if I remember right, maybe publishing a map now. And let's add a map display. Let's see what topics are available in map. Let's read the map and bingo. So you can see our laser scan doesn't really line up with it because it's, this is a previously uh, stored map. And they just think they're in different locations. Now I can change to the map uh, view and it lines up with my grid. Because that's how I have it set. Um, let's see, let's add, in fact, our odometry. So if we add this odometry marker, like a topic, uh, we have to make sure we uh, use the right topic type. Um, had I selected the other odometry message, this is a message that I use for convenience. Um, and it does not include quaternion data. So no matter where the robot is, the arrow is always pointing in the wrong direction. Um, I use that so that I can numerically read Euler angles instead of quaternions, but we're also publishing a proper message to go along with it. So the arrows are super handy. We can change the color. I usually, in fact, just out of habit, run my odometry green and a little bit shorter. You can change the length if you don't want it that long. So with that posted, um, that's where the robot thinks it is right now because I randomly initialized it when I started this uh, tutorial. Um, if I use, hopefully I have this node running, I have a pose estimator nodes so I can correct where the robot is. And oh, this is an older incomplete map, but it's okay. Well, we're going to fake it. Um, robot should be somewhere around here. Now, if I use the pose estimate, I can change where it is there. Notice the old arrow is still in place. That's because we are keeping 100 of the last messages. The last odometry messages are going to show up as arrows. So I'm going to change that to zero or one rather. 
Zero means keep all of them. And now we're in a better place. So now if we, let's turn our laser scanner back on and see how closely we match up. So let me change my pose estimate. See this doorway here isn't quite matching up. About that much. So there we go. Now we're matching up a little bit. And I have this part of the map chopped off on purpose. It's actually there. So that's what these buttons do. This pose estimate publishes a actually message. I have myself another node running that turns it into something that my odometry node listens to and updates and corrects the pose estimate. Um, similarly, the nav goal uh, also publishes another message. That message is move base simple goal. I turn that into um, a message that I use. Um, and you don't have to do these extra steps. Um, there are reasons I do, especially for tutorials. And publish point is uh, another message. And all that does is publishes uh, a clicked point. So if you're trying to measure something, um, there are other reasons you could use the click point message. But these are all ROS messages and they all have definitions. If you look at the ROS docs in, in wiki, wiki.ros.org has all the message docs. We're on USB cam node. Okay, that should be running. We're going to edit image. Click down here. Of course, nothing is shown yet. So I have a first person view of what my robot sees as it navigates around the house. Every one of these display options subscribes to a ROS message. This is a, an interface for you, for the user. The robot doesn't need RViz to run, um, but this is a tool to help you and to make some, uh, to get some extra use and utility out of your robot. But it works by subscribing to, and in some cases, publishing ROS messages. And that's what it's all about. Get really comfortable with ROS messages, publishing them, reading them, one more thing I wanted to address. When you go to add a topic, let's say you wanted to add a uh, the pose. You wanted to see the pose of your robot. Uh, right down here in the description, it tells you what message type Arviz is expecting. And if you get this wrong, uh, this is expecting a geometry messages, a pose stamped message. So if you're publishing a non-stamped pose message, you'll get an error and a lot of times it will um, disconnect from that topic all together and it's just not going to work. So that's our viz in a nutshell. It's not meant to be an in-depth uh, tutorial, just something to get you started. When I first started working with our viz, I found a lack of information just to get things displayed and how they work. And with that, we have one last matter of business to get to. And that is in my last video, I promised to give away a set of Roomba robot wheels for your hacking pleasure. We have three subscribers who commented below, and I have entered their names into an inline random picker. And I'm just going to pick a random person. And Morning View, congratulations, Morning View. I'm going to try to get a hold of you and see how I can get you a set of Roomba wheels. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Lloyd, author of Practical Robotics in C++, and we'll see you next time.